Mid South on PCH. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. It's a gorgeous day. Uh, I got an invitation the other day to go down down to Sony Pictures, uh, the on the studio lot in Culver City, where Sony is, because there's a movie coming out called Passengers, and it's a science fiction film. It looks pretty freaking epic, and they want me to interview the production designer. Uh, as well as a couple other people. So I'm gonna take you guys down with me. We're gonna talk to uh, the production designer, I think first, his name is Guy Dias. Uh, I've known about Guy, and I think we actually worked on a couple of projects, um, although not together over separate periods of time. Movies like Cats and Dogs and uh, a couple others uh, way back in the day. He's now a production designer, he's doing very well. Uh, he's done Inception and a number of other uh, movies. And now he's doing Passengers. It looks really, really cool. The quality production looks awesome. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about it, see what his take is on the uh, on the film, and uh, why it's so cool, and why we should all go see it. And we get to hang out on the lot, which is always fun. So I know nothing about this movie. I just saw a billboard. Now I know it comes out Christmas time. Ah, the power of advertising. I think I'm a little early. Go check it out. Go get some coffee. Early, so I'm gonna walk around the lot a little bit. It's nice to walk around when there's nobody here. It's like Ghost Town Central. As I mentioned, I'm interviewing Guy Dias, who's the production designer on Passengers. He's done a lot of great movies. But I'm also interviewing Marianne Brandon, who is the editor on this movie. She's edited a lot of stuff. Uh, she's got numerous awards, uh, including Oscar nominations for Star Wars, The Force Awakens, for Star Trek. She's done a lot of, a lot of great stuff. Uh, all the way back, she's even directed some episodes of Alias, which is you know, quite a ways from there. Oh, check that out, Spider-Man. Right there, Spider-Man. I don't really know which direction to go. Everything's closed, nothing going on, it's too early. Last time I brought you guys down the lot, we did this thing on Ghostbusters, and the cars are still here. Check them out. I ain't afraid of no Cadillacs. on the lot. It's so lifelike. It used to be that movies that were done on the lot here at Sony were only done at Sony or Paramount or Warner Brothers or Universal. But the truth is now Movies can get made anywhere. A movie that is backed by Sony can be shot at Universal. It can be partially shot at Warner Brothers. It doesn't really matter. So lots of cool movies have been shot here. And I'm sure something's been shot here too. Doesn't that look like a movie set? Doesn't that look like it would like collapse during an earthquake or something? Probably did. But now it's a coffee bean. Maybe this lot is a spaceship and everybody's asleep. 
because it's a 200 year voyage. Okay, I know next to nothing about this movie other than I've seen the trailer once. It's two really gorgeous people out in space along with a bunch of other people that you don't see. They're all asleep. They're heading from one galaxy to the next. And these two gorgeous people wake up wondering what to do with each other. I don't know, I, I don't think I'd have a problem with that. I'm pretty sure I could think of a few things right off the bat. Let's ask these guys. Let's find out what they think. Okay, Guy, how's it going? Uh, fine. Thanks for uh, chatting to me. Uh, this is Guy Dice. Uh, uh, we are here talking about your new movie, Passengers. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's, I'm compelled to ask the initial question that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking is if, if you were on this spaceship for as long as these guys are, and you wake up with some gorgeous woman who also happens <laughs> to wake up at the same time, um, uh, would you be able to think of something to do? I'm, yeah, I would think of a lot of things I would like yeah. to do. Like right off the bat, uh, you'd probably think of a few things. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. It may and not be a bad thing, but... but. No, it, they would all be good things, of course. And it, I, well, on the days that I was there on set with our director, uh, Morton and DP, Rodrigo, uh, there, it was amazing. I'd turn up, you know, with these designs and, and the whole thing was very fast-tracked. And I'd turn up, be trying to talk to Morton, and then I'd look at what they were filming and sort of get a little hot under the collar at times, I've got to be honest. You know? We both have a background as, as illustrators in film. We and, work together. Uh, yeah. We have, and uh, it's a, a tremendous career for young people to yeah. want to get into the business and to become a designer. I mean, just about every job on the planet can be found in the film industry. Yeah, you know, that's if you're so true. a greensman or, or if you're you know uh, medical, anything like that. But as a designer, you know, coming through the ranks for yourself and becoming a production designer and working on films like this, you've done Inception, you've done mm -hmm. a lot of really great movies. Uh, do you still do a lot of sketching? Do you do, you do things? Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The stuff that that moves that along, or do you hire people to do that too? I still hire, uh, depending on the size of the film, I still hire a lot of uh, illustrators and storyboard artists to help out the director. And uh, now, of course, there's the emergence of 3D design. So I get a lot of people who have amazing oh, yeah. 3D ability. We get to build these sets and rotate them. But yeah, I still fundamentally think with my pencil, yeah. as, as I'm sure you do. Well, and now, of course, I, I don't have the time and I like yeah. to put my hands on everything. So I have a tiny sketchbook, one of those little tiny Dela black sketchbooks from uh, 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 from the UK, I think they are. And um, I've just, I, I literally have a library of them. I have one for every movie I've done. Yeah, that's cool. And I usually go to my first meeting with a director and I've got just these little, very traditional pencil sketches. Mm -hmm. And straight away, because they're loose and they're pencil, there's a great sense of the director not having to make a commitment, you yeah. know? When you show something too flashy at the beginning, they feel rigid, like, yeah. if I say yes, that's it. Um, when it's a pencil sketch, they can say, I like that direction, can we see some more of that? Yeah. Then I would give that to uh, one, of the, one of the guys uh, that, that's working for me, one of the, the concept artists or illustrators, mm -hmm. and they then fundamentally take that and start developing it. And sometimes it stays the course, sometimes it goes in a yeah. different direction. I think the same, the same can be said in the, even in the automotive industry. You know, when you're doing sketches of vehicles and things like that, relating back to, we have a lot of people in the audience that love cars. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm sure that you've done vehicles over, over time, but those initial uh, captures of emotion in mm. those sketches, um, is what kind of holds people in and say, yeah, flush that out. I want to be able to see more of that kind of stuff. What do you drive? What's your favorite? <laughs> well, I, I'll be completely honest. Um, I sacrificed even owning a car. My, my, my lovely wife, I have two kids. My wife drives a Pri Prius. And uh, the sacrifice was because I have a huge collection of vintage motorcycles. Ah. And my prized possession is a Vincent Black Shadow. Two wheel demons. For all those out there that, <laughs> that love motorcycles, you'll know Vincent Black Shadow. Oh, yeah. So no movie is really that good unless it has some kind of vehicle in it, as far as I'm concerned. I, I got to agree with that. <laughs> okay, so Passengers has something in it, something that we can't can necessarily show what it is, but yeah. uh, what is this vehicle that, that travels around inside the ship? It's, it's this funky little, uh, almost like a four-wheel tugboat. The idea is it pushes around these huge containers and it's sort of the uh, 
the, the small workhorse of this huge spaceship and it, it was uh, initially sketched out, I won't take credit for this, by a very, very talented and good friend of mine. I've known him since uh, ILM called Ed Natividad. I know Ed, true. And uh, Ed is one of the true geniuses out there. Anyway, Ed came up with this phenomenal design and we spent a good six, seven weeks trying to manipulate basically a golf cart into <laughs> this extraordinary vehicle who, who that built Ed that? designed. Uh, we did, we did it okay. in-house and I have to say it was my first kind of futuristic vehicle. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun to do, yeah, awesome. real pleasure to do it. Well, I appreciate your time and always, I, I wish you the always. best of luck on this. Thank you. Uh, we're, I'm, I always look forward to, uh, to top-notch science fiction and yeah. certainly with all the steamy scenes. <laughs> it's, it's an addition, it's gonna be good. I'm, I'm sure It'll it's be, be good. Great. This is Marianne and um, she may look unassuming, but she's really not. <laughs> Very complex individual. Uh, Marianne is the editor for Passengers. Uh, anything else besides editor? Best friend, critic, that's, rewrite artist, that's what I confessional, was uh, the parent. Movies, <laughs> the movies are made in the editing bay. I, I like directors, I like producers, but the, the real head honchos are you guys. That is correct. Yeah, and I did ask this question off the bat with Guy because I think it's the most pertinent question as it comes for this movie. Okay. And that is, imagine yourself on this spaceship and you wake up way too early and uh, a gorgeous guy also happens to wake up at the same time. You mean like Chris Pratt? Oh, like just stunningly gorgeous guy. <laughs> Would you have an issue thinking of something to do, you know, for the next 90 years? Hmm. I think we could have a lot of fun exploring the ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some steamy parts of the ship, I'm sure. There's some areas that are... There are a lot of yeah. areas on the ship. Yeah. That could take a good five years. <laughs> <laughs> You've edited a lot of things, a lot of great stuff. You've gotten a lot of great awards for uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, for Star Trek. I love filmmaking, so I... Um, and I've kind of always bumbled my way into it. So it, I didn't grow up in a film family, or I yeah. just went to the movies a lot. Just kind of happened. Just, you know, I just... Just like the I awards, think, they just kind of throw them no, at you. You don't know what to do with them. Are you done with this movie? No. Uh, in fact, when this interview's over, I'm going over to the mix stage. What the <laughs> hell are you doing here, man? I've got like three weeks. I know, but it's all doable. You know, until they no tear pressure. it out of my cold, dead fingers. You know, when I first started the film, Sony and Morton and everyone was like, oh, this is a limited cast, you know, it's a really doable film. And I came on the film a week later, I was like, this film's gigantic. It's bigger than Star Wars because it's, the whole world's created. Mm -hmm. And if the movie tanks, guess who they're gonna point the finger at? Morton. Probably me for the yeah. bad interview. Yeah. yeah, you ruined my career. Yeah, because right, of I have my no bad card. I can. <laughs> That's right. It was this guy. I don't. I'm not sure I've ever worked on a film where two leads have had as much chemistry. Nice. Like you just, they're, you're like, oh my god. And thanks to people like you, it's even more intense. That's right. Right? That's my job. All right, Passengers comes out Christmas time. Lots of sexy sci-fi. Very sexy sci-fi. I'm in line. I'm leaving here. I'm going to go get in line. I, I, I can't watch it enough times. You and better not. you got to get back to work, man. <laughs> thanks. See you later. You have a good day. Okay. That was pretty fun. Those guys were hysterical. I think this movie is going to rock. I don't know, uh, maybe it's just me, but they look like they're having a good time. I pretty much love anything sci-fi, and there is a cool little vehicle in it, as you heard Guy say, what it looks like. Time will tell. We'll check it out when the movie comes out. amazing couple of individuals you know I'm I feel so blessed and so grateful to be able to interview people like this because uh, both Guy and Marianne are truly talents in this industry and it's just a, a a great thing to be able to sit down talk with them give them you know mess with them a little bit give them a little hard time about certain things and get excited for the movie because I think the movie's going to be going to be really awesome it's something that I'm looking forward to I think you guys should 
uh, look forward to it. I think it's something that's really going to be fun. I mean, you can't really miss with those two actors and up in space and you know doing all the things that that you got to do out in space. I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to be in line. I'm going to go see it. Okay, I'm out of time. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me. Be sure to subscribe and be sure to to hit the like button and do all the things that you're supposed to do in social media. I mean, you know, all the things, the obvious things: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You know, just get to it. Hit the likes across the board because we're having a blast here. I know this movie's going to be cool, and you know we should just like have a big passengers party. This is Vlog 502. Good to go. We'll see you tomorrow.